Maybe let's go back to why you even started uh, playing bass in the first place. Uh, playing bass in the first place, I was like 15 years old, and as a teenager, you want to play something to impress the girls, I guess. Uh, and I started out on guitar, and the old story, there was a thousand guitars in the band, so somebody had to play the bass. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm from the, I'm from born in the 60s, so I was a teenager in the 70s, so it was British glam rock, it was sweet, and Alice Cooper. And I had posters all over my wall with, the, with, with pop bands and, and, and Sweet Slate and Alice Cooper. I love that sound too, I'm playing with that, I'm playing with that. Playing with a pick, that's uh, one of the, my favorite uh, my favorite things. And then um, some years after, when I was 18, 19 years old, I got in this band where they need a bass player and I started to listen to funk music. I, I heard okay. uh, Earth, Wind and Fire and then I thought, like, bass, that, that can be interesting too when the bass was more in the front. So that got me into that style of music and uh, later Josh Duke and of course, James Brown, Parliament. In the 80s, of course, uh, David Sandboard, Marcus Miller, Miles Davis in his funky period. I think actually it's, it's very important that you, uh, you listen to a lot of different music. Keep your ears open to all kinds of music. That's, I would recommend that. And then you had, like, you had a period where you didn't play that much, is that right? Yeah, yeah, because I've... <clears throat> Actually, I was I had my I played mostly in the '80s, but then I had a period where I stopped practicing and was more interesting in just hanging out. So I kind of I, I my musical level dropped a bit, <laughs> and <laughs> and then I got other other interest. I started uh, working with web design, but uh, I kind of got out of music. I still play with some uh, some some semi big bands in Denmark, but. But not, I didn't really practice and didn't really interest me. In fact, f until uh, three years ago, uh, many of my bases stood collecting dust in the, the corner. Uh, one day, one of my friends introduced me to uh, YouTube, uh, mostly because it, it was where you can see, watch old concert clips of artists that you loved and uh, all that. But I also uh, saw that people were actually sitting and playing the instrument. I, I, dug out of all my old funk records, the, the songs that I practiced in the start 80s, and started just by making some, what you call, play-alongs, where you, you just uh, play bass on top of old funk recordings. And, and suddenly people start following, I made this channel on YouTube where I made these funk recordings, and apparently not many other people have, hadn't made that. Of course, all the teenagers uh, or the, the young aspiring players thought, hey, what a great style. I never heard that music. When you, you grow up, you hear some music and you don't know that that music is based on some other older music. Yeah. For instance, a lot of my bass playing friends thought that Mark King had invented the slap bass where it was Larry Graham 10, 20 years before him. But it, it's a natural thing. So uh, for all these young players, it was a revelation to find, these, uh, find this music. And also for all the older players, my own age, who at some point had gotten a wife and job and, and, and put the bass on the shelf for 20 years. And they, I inspired them to start playing again. It just continued, I got, got more and more uh, viewers, and then I started making some small tutorial videos, how to play a certain part of a song, or how to play a certain technique, and, and the, that got, got me more followers, and then I thought, why don't I just make a website for that? So I made playbasenow.com, <laughs> <laughs> my totally free tutorial website. Yeah. But I thought, I'll make it free, and then if people want to pay me, that's, uh, that's okay. Uh, and I actually got, get a lot of donations from people who appreciate the service. Actually, I got two s new sets of strings yesterday from a, a fan that wanted me to pay me in that way, so I think that's, that's great. <laughs> You've been amazingly active. I mean, I, I saw your web page as well, and you have, what, 230-something, 250 uh, yeah, videos? I'm up to 242 leaks of the day. <laughs> How do you come up with all that stuff? Yeah, I mean, I've always been good at, uh, at 
the, uh, in improvising some stuff. When we have a, a rock or funk bass line, it's, we use the root note and we use the fifth, the seventh, the octave, octave, and the third. So it's just a combination of these uh, notes if I was to play. And then you just use another technique. What's your basic setup, just real brief? Uh, basic setup, uh, I have several setups. Right now I'm using the, the, the direct output of the TC Electronic, uh, uh, the Rebel Head. And then I go into my sound card at Duet. Duet. Uh, Apogee. Yeah, Apogee Duet. And then straight into the MacBook. And uh, I usually u just use the uh, internal, internal camera of the, the MacBook. Just recently, you had uh, you kind of changed your structure a little bit around your web page, and you have a new web page up now. But the thing is that uh, I got closed down on YouTube. And then I thought there must be a place that I can place my, my old play alongs because all my fans, they wanted to listen to them. So I made a new website called youplayalong.com where people can uh, upload all their cover versions. And it's for all, all instruments, drums, bass, guitar, keyboards. And uh, so people can watch other people's fingers uh, learning to play some songs. And it's an easy way uh, and more easy way to, 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 to learn stuff. So that's my, my new website. And future-wise, uh, any, any big plans? Anything new and interesting that you have on the horizon? Uh, yeah, um, uh, my band, or the band I'm in is, is called Al Campus and Soul Harmonic. We are, it's a, basically a soul funk band. We made a record uh, one or two years ago that is being released in Japan. And we are uh, here in August. And we are in the midst of making our new album, who will come out here in the uh, late fall. And finally, any comments or experiences with the, uh, with the TC AMP? Yeah, I think it's great. Uh, uh, because it's first and, for first and foremost, it's light. I can have it in a, in a, in a shoulder bag. And, uh, and the, the whole principle about the, the two cabinets on top of each other, so I can I can hear myself properly on stage. It just sounds good. <laughs> and you you've played it live as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I played it live as well. So and and the combination that I can uh, I can record uh, in at home making my bass licks of the day and and take it out on the road and take it to the rehearsal room. I mean, I went to rehearsal room yesterday on a bicycle and I had my bass and the amp on the bicycle yeah, over the shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. How many amps can you say that about? <laughs> so uh, I'm, really, I'm really enjoying it, actually. Um, it's, a, it's a great piece of equipment. Mm -hmm.